All right. Yes, it is Thanksgiving service. Uh, so we've got a lot of things to be thankful for. Uh, I am definitely thankful on this uh, glorious day. Uh, one of the things I'm thankful for is uh, uh, just being able to have a church where we can come and worship the Lord and, and just to bless the Lord and to uh, see each other. And, you know, it's always good to see, uh, you know, people, you know, like uh, we, I know some of the people I haven't seen in a while, but it's always good to see you and to uh, welcome you back and to uh, for the people that have been coming regularly. And it's really awesome. It's really great. Uh, Sunday uh, should be a day where we can just be excited because all the weeks that we've gone through, we can lay all that today here before the Lord and be thankful. Uh, so I, I know over the couple days, I kind of asked people to come and uh, you know present your talents of singing. Uh, but I don't know if you guys are shy or you guys just uh, you know are not up for it. But is it before? This is your last chance. <laughs> this is your last chance. Does anybody want to do a special song? Nothing? Okay. Well, we I, well uh, my family is going to do one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to do one. Uh, well, initially started with, with uh, Adelaide first. I said, Adelaide, just do it by yourself. No, actually, actually, it started off with uh, uh, like Adelaide for her birthday. Her birthday was on Thursday, last Thursday. And uh, she, what, what she wanted for her birthday was a ukulele. Uh, and she bought a ukulele, and she's been practicing ukulele. And, uh, and you know, some of you guys know that she's really musically talented. And uh, she picked up, like, just like that. Uh, I, so while she was playing ukulele, I was like, let me bust out the guitar that I've been playing for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and I when initially started, like, let's do it together. Like, I'll play guitar, and she'll play ukulele, and we'll sing a song. Uh, turned out to be like not so good. <laughs> My daughter was like, "You're not in tune. You're not in the rhythm. Stop trying." <laughs> so, but, but, so that, then it became just, oh, "Okay, Adelaide, why don't you do it by yourself?" I said, "No, no, no, no." Yeah, she's still, she's still only 14, so she's kind of shy still. So then it started off, "Okay, I'll sing with you." Uh, so I don't know how good it might be, but and then obviously the kicker or the icing on the top is my wife said. I'll sing with you. I say thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, without further ado, uh, I'll have uh, my daughter and my wife come up, and we'll do a special song for you guys. P. P. D. You won't need a mic. No, it's for Adelaide. So we had, to, we had to pick a simple song because you know, Adelaide's still learning guitar, so. But this is, this is only like, what, three months that she's learned guitar? <laughs> pick, do you have another kiss? Matt, do you have a pick? Matthew. Pick, pick. Oh, man. <laughs>
especially when you're not used to seeing, oh man, I was kind of nervous out there, man. <laughs> uh, but truly, uh, you know, there's a lot to be thankful for. I mean, uh, it's easy for me to be up here and, and then just look at, you know, Adelaide and, you know, the gifts that she has that God's given her and just, uh, just really, uh, it's, it's something that can look at and be really thankful, you know. Um, not only that, um, I, was, I was contemplating, but, you know, I'll just share this too, but, you know, you know that I do a lot of talking about my kids. Like, there's a new thing on Facebook, <laughs> a Facebook app that says the most words that you use on your, on your, on your uh, media, whatever, on your Facebook and it pops up all these words that you use most in a whole year. So I tried it too, and I was like, I wonder what my words are that I use a lot. And you know, I had God, I had the Lord, and then I had Adelaide Tavil, <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah, I, I, I do, I do a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, boasting about my kids. Um, I'm really just thankful for the Lord to uh, entrust me with these uh, kids. And some of you guys who are parents, uh, one of the one days when you do become a parent, uh, the biggest thing you have to realize is that you know, these are not your children. This is just uh, children of the Lord. And uh, you're just an earthly, earthly human uh, part of it, of their life. That God said, you know what, you're responsible for these children I'm going to use one day. And, you know... Uh, so that's something that you know. That's something that you should take when you have children. I, t- I say that because uh, let me tell you, there's nothing in this world that brings more joy than children, but uh, more stress too. <laughs> uh, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. So unless you really understand that these are God's children, that when kids stray off from their faith, or when kids go into the rebellious stage, or when kids do these different things, you just gotta trust the Lord because the Lord is the one that can. And I'm sure that all of you went through that experience yourself uh, one day or another when you were younger, those younger days when you used to be wild and crazy. And, and maybe some of you are older now to look back and say, hey, I wonder how, why I'm so stupid back then. You know, but when you look back, you realize all the things that, that made you who you are today. Um, but another thing that I'm thankful for, I just want to kind of share with you is that you guys know I, I talk about Togo a lot too. And he's not here today. He's not, he wasn't part of our singing today because... Uh, he's uh, he's uh, actually going to a football practice. Uh, he's, he's, his football is like 24-7 all year round. But he did go to church this morning. Uh, he always goes to church on Sunday. He goes to uh, KC, uh, KCPC, or Korean uh, Christian Church. Uh, but one of the things I'm, I, I guess I could say that you know, this, this thing happened yesterday where he went to an all-star practice where they were doing uh, showcases and stuff. And Tavil came home when they came, Tavil came home last night and he brought me this uh, card. He brought me this little name card. And I said, what is this? And he said, it was, it was the coach that was watching. And I said, okay. And what did he do? He, he said, he, he, he was a high school coach. And uh, he gave a business card to him and to the coach, his, his, usual, his uh, original coach, the travel team coach. And then what is it for? And he said, I don't know. And then I talked to the original coach. And I said, What's, what is this? He said that, this high school coach is a this, this is a this is a private school in DC, and uh, he uh, he's recruiting already. Uh, so this is like his first recruiting card. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to frame it. <laughs> it's his first recruiting card, uh, and I was like, wow, that's that's, that's amazing. And when I you know hear these notes, you hear this uh, news, and you're like, man, that's so thankful. But I'm telling you right now. As great as you know, I, I seem like I'm having with my kids and all the things that they're doing, all the gifts they have, they bring me thankfulness. But it won't last. It doesn't last. These materialistic things, these things that we seek out after, those things that we want to, for us to be thankful for, it won't last. They only bring you a, a short time of thankfulness. And I want us to, for this week, because Thanksgiving is in about a couple days, to truly understand what it means to be thankful and what the Bible says about being thankful. You see, you cannot be praiseful if you're not thankful. One of the things that I'm struggling with, or one of the things that I'm trying to get myself to, is to really, when I come to worship God, when I'm coming to Sunday, when I come before the Lord, when I come before His presence, I mean, yeah, God's presence is everywhere, but when we come on a specific day, like on a Sunday, 
when we come and enter his building, when we enter his gates, our mouths should be filled with thankfulness. We shouldn't walk through these doors with, with a, a heavy heart. We're like, oh man, you know, life sucks. Or man, this is going on. Oh man, we should put that aside for a moment. And when we enter, the, enter these doors, we should say, Lord, I am thankful for you for this moment right now. This very second, I am thankful. Because Psalms 104 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. You see, the psalmist tells us that when we enter his gates, we shouldn't be walking through the gates like, oh God, another day. <laughs> oh God, this is bad. We should walk into his gates and say, Lord, thank you, Lord. I know my life is this right now. I know I'm going through so many, but let me just be thankful for a moment. Let me just be thankful for a second because of who you are, because of what you have done in my life. Be thankful to the Lord. What is thankfulness? What is what is the, what is what is it to be thankful? We can look at back, we can look back at the past and see how God acted, how God blessed you. Nothing we have achieved, nothing I mean, not, nothing we have is an achievement. It is a receivement. Nothing that we have achieved is something from us. It has been received. It's been given to us. Think back and look at the past. Look at what God has done. Look at what God has done in every single of your life from the past. Psalms 103 and 12 says, Blessed the Lord, O my soul, and all that is written within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The benefits that he's given you, the things that he's given you, the shelter that's on your clothes, the place that we live in. There's a lot of things that are going around this world. You, you, you see it on the news every single moment. You, there's something going on in the news. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for the place that you are at at this moment. Thankfulness is, is an attitude of gratitude to God for what he has done for you. It's an attitude of gratitude. A, and you got to have that attitude. you got to have it. you got to want it. you got to say this is, you got to ingrain in your heart to be thankful every moment. The Bible tells us why we must give thanks. The first thing that we know to give thanks is because it's a good thing. Being thankful is a good thing. Psalms 92, 1 says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Once again, the psalmist tells us it is a good thing to be thankful. And not just be thankful, but sing praises, sing to the Lord. Now, I'm not saying that we walk around and sing melodies or anything, but singing means just that whatever comes out of your lips, make it be a praise to the Lord. Not only is it a good thing, but it is the will of God. One of the things that I, I think I mentioned a couple months ago is like a lot of us search for what is the will for me, or most importantly, what does God want me to do in this life? What is God's will for my will for my life? Well, there's a lot of things that the Bible clearly lays out what God's will is. And when we say God's will, we say that this is God's desires. This is what God wants. This is what He uh, wants in all of our lives. So what is the will of God? In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. Do you understand? It is God's will. It is God's desire. It is what God wants, that you give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances. We'll talk about that a little later on. The next thing, it is the key to access the promises of God. Being thankful opens the promises of God. Look at what Hebrews 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 says. For you have the need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Now here it says, if you've done the will of God, and I think I mentioned a couple times of uh, some of the wills of God. The will of God is to be thankful uh, in all circumstances. One another thing of the will of God is to be sexual pure. One of Another rule of God is to uh, submit to authority. There's a lot of things that I've mentioned, I think, several months ago, what the will of God is. But in this specific moment, in this specific uh, passage, the will of God is what? To give thanks. So what Hebrews is saying is that if you do the will of God, if you're thankful in all circumstances, you will receive his promises. You will receive his promises. 
you will receive his blessings. Not only is it a good thing, not only is it the will of God, not only does it open the promises of God, your prayer cannot be complete. Your prayer cannot be complete without thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Paul says that when you lift up a prayer, when you're giving up a something, when you're asking God for all these things in prayer, it must be surrounded with thanksgiving. Without thanksgiving, your prayer is, un, is incomplete. Thankfulness is the healing to your soul. Being thankful brings healing to your soul. The writer of Psalm 23 says that he restores my soul. You see, I think there's a thing that we all know that our souls sometimes go out of whack. Our emotions go out of control. It's hard to contain our emotion, what we feel. But when we are thankful, when we are thankful, it will restore our soul. It will bring your soul back to healing when you become thankful. Listen to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I know we said in verse 18 it was the will of God to be thankful. But if you read some verses above it and below it, you'll understand what Paul was saying about giving thanks in all circumstances. Look at verse 14. He says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the fainted hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for both for yourself and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecy. Test all things. Hold fast of what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now what may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. What did Paul say? Sanctify you completely. How are we to be complete? To give thanks in all circumstances. To give thanks to all circumstances. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want to suggest some several things that thankfulness can overcome. Thankfulness can overcome depression. A lot of us feel that we are depressed. Depression is a form of discouragement. It's an absence of thankfulness. Being thankful will overcome your depression. It will fight your depression if you become thankful. Let me tell you a story here. There was a baseball player named Billy Sunday. He was, a, he was a very famous baseball player, but he gave up his baseball to be an evangelist. And some of you know, an evangelist is someone that goes and preaches the gospel. They don't, have a, they don't have a home church. They go out in the streets and they preach. One of the famous stories of Billy Sunday is that he was preaching in the corners of New York. And he was preaching, he's preaching, he's preaching, and he had a mass amount of crowds. And then all of a sudden, one of the, there was a heckler in the crowd. You know, you're, you're going to get some hecklers every once in a while. And the heckler's like, man, I don't believe that Bible you're talking about. And Billy Sunday said, why not? Oh, that, that's all a bunch of whatever. It's all fairy tales, whatever. And Billy Sunday walked down from his pulpit and walked to that man and said, well, okay, okay, how can I prove to you that the Bible is real? He goes, well, you tell me something in the Bible that's real, then I'll believe it. And he said, you sure? He said, yes. What Billy Sunday did, he grabbed the guy's nose and he wrung it real hard. He took the guy's nose and wrung it, and blood just dripped out of his nose. And the guy was like, what are you doing, man? He said, I'm, I'm going to show you what the Bible says. And he, he goes to Proverbs, and it says that uh, ringing of the nose forth brings blood. <laughs> and the guy believed that moment. <laughs> and it's one of those stories that imagine, like Billy Sunday had, you know. Anyway, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's kind of funny. But anyways, but this is, this is true. He was happily married to a woman named Helen, who was often known as Ma Sunday. On November 19, 1935, Billy Sunday suffered a heart attack and died in his wife's arms. These two were deeply in love. They were life partners in the Lord's ministry. They did the work together. You can imagine how devastated Ma Sunday was. 
And in a moment, she lost her husband, her love, and her life's work doing the work of the ministry. She felt herself spiraling into depression, falling into the depths of despair. And maybe some of us have find ourselves slowly spiraling down depression. Sometime later, a group of Christian, uh, a, a group of Christians in Buffalo, New York, asked her to come to speak to their group. This is like there were several months after she lost Billy Sunday. A group of Christians asked her to come and do a, a conference for them. She first rejected it and said, "I am not." in the state of mind to do so. But after much prayer, after much thinking, she felt the Lord saying, you need to do this. So she gathered her thoughts and wrote a title to send to them. And this was her title. Her title was, in her conference, her speaking was, Things I'm Thankful For. That was her title of her message things I'm thankful for. So she began to develop a long list of things that she was thankful for. And she got up to speak at that conference, and this was her words. This is her words. Folks, it's surprising how many things God can reveal to you to be thankful for. If you really want to know and ask Him to help you, I had no idea there were so many to be thankful for. But when I prayed and asked God to help me write them down, they came into my mind one after the other. And the very first thing that I was thankful for was my husband, Billy. If Billy had to go, oh, how thankful I was to God Almighty that he called him away instantaneously. He just cried out to me, I'm feeling dizzy, and he was gone. How wonderful to be here one second and how great it is to be in heaven the very next. Never knowing any real pain, not knowing any real suffering of that type. I think God was so good to Billy that he took him in that way. I thank the Lord for it. That's how she began her comment. That's how she began her sermon. That she was thankful for to God in the fashion the way Billy died. She wasn't contemplating. She wasn't sorrowfully in the despair of, oh, why did God take my husband? Why did it all? She didn't. She must have felt that. But she overcame that depression with thankfulness and saying, Lord, let me be thankful for what you did do. That my husband didn't have to go through a, 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 a stroke or something and then be paralyzed halfway down. Now, I thank you, Lord, for just instantaneously that he didn't have to have that much pain, but he went from here to heaven instantaneously, and now he's rejoicing with you. Now he's in heaven with you, and now he's living in a new body. And the more she thought about it, the more she was thankful, the more she came out of her depression. Let me tell you that thankfulness is the opposite of displeasure and unhappiness. Do you feel like you're unhappy? Are you unhappy about this world? Are you unhappy about your life? Being thankful will overcome those things. Being thankful will make you realize and be joyful of the place that you're in. I read this article here about a man who was thankful. And this is an article here. He says this. I am thankful for the clothes that fit a little too snugly. Because it means I have enough to eat. <laughs> That's like me, okay? <laughs> he says, I'm thankful for all the complaining here I hear about the government. Because what it means to me is that we have the freedom of speech. I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off early in the morning, hours. Because it means that I'm alive. I'm thankful that I have to pay taxes. Because it means that I'm employed. I am thankful for a teenager who doesn't do the dishes, but keeps on watching TV. Because that means that he is at home and not on the streets. I am thankful for the lawn that, that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, and gutters that needs fixing, because it means that I have a home. I am thankful for the weariness at the end of the day, because it means that I have been capable of working hard. 
I'm thankful for the parking spot I find at the far end of the shopping mall because it means I'm capable of walking and that I feel blessed that I have a transportation. You see, this guy flips everything that could be so complaining. You see, the opposite of thankfulness is complaining. If you're not thankful, you're complaining. And the one thing that God hates is complaining. And that's all over. If you see what the Israelites did when they came out of Egypt for 40 years, why, why did they have to suffer for 40 years? All because of complaining. God says in the Old Testament, he says, he hates grumblers. He hates complaining. So if you're not thankfulness, if you're not being thankful, you are, going, you are complaining. We got to have a heart of thankfulness. Now, like I said before, that I mentioned, especially in the world that we live in, it's very hard to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful. And Paul says it to be thankful in all circumstances. Sometimes we read this and we sometimes we kind of misinterpret this. I don't know who's water, but I need to drink. <laughs> who's water? I was nobody from this church? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't drink that. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh man, my, my nose fell out. Hold on. Oh. What was I saying? Okay. What was I saying? What was I saying? Huh? Complaining. Oh, yeah, okay. So, alright, so, uh, I, like I mentioned, oh, yeah, okay. So, Paul says it uh, to, be, to be thankful in all circumstances. And, the thing is, when we miss, sometimes we misinterpret it and say, how can we be thankful in all circumstances? How can we be thankful when, when, when someone just died? How can we be thankful when people are getting killed? How, how can we be thankful when good people die and all these things? We can put in all these different things. The context is this. Yes, we, yes, there are times where we can't be thankful. But there is one thing we can do, and that is being grateful. We can be grateful. What can we be grateful? We can be grateful that Christ has forgiven you and he loved you. And he died on the cross for you. We can be grateful that nothing in this world will ever separate you from God's love. We can be grateful that God is working in every circumstances, in every moment in your life for the good. We can be thankful and we can be grateful that God will supply your every need. We can be grateful that, that God will give you strength when we need it. We can be grateful that no one can snatch you out of his hand. We can be grateful that God will finish the work that he started in your life. We can be grateful because we have been extended and given His mercy and His love. Those are the things that we can be grateful. Those are the things that we can use when we're in this life. Yes, there'll be times when we can't be thankful, but we can always be grateful for the things that the Lord has done. This Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving, as we celebrate this holiday, mm -hmm. be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful and give yourself to the Lord. And don't allow these things to bring you down or drag you down. Walk out of here today and say, you know what? I'm going to be thankful to the Lord. Not just on Thanksgiving, not just because we have all these food or whatever, but because God loved me. God gave his life for me. I should be thankful every moment of my life. So let's pray.